The creator Brahma and his imaginary son is the mighty river Brahmaputra. The mighty Brahmaputra flows from the northeast of India through the state of Assam. Lit is another name for Brahmaputra. The civilization that had flourished along both the banks of this river is very ancient. Assam has been mentioned as Pragdutishpur in Mahabharata and in the Tantras and Puranas it is referred to as Kamro. In the mythological literature of Puranas, there is mention of the advent of Kiratas to the banks of the Brahmaputra. Eventually, the Kiratas were further subdivided into many other groups which merged to form the larger ethnic group of the Kacharis. Gradually, this ancient ethnic tribe spread into the banks of the Kopili Jomuna, Doyang, Thonsiri and the Barak Valley. The anthropomorphic tribes of the region did not make a systematic historical record of their lives and times. Ancient architecture, sculpture and rock inscriptions which may be approximately dated back to the 4th and 5th century BC are still being discovered in this region even today. These ancient archaeological resources discovered in Assam provide information regarding its ancient history. The Akakiganga waterfall is situated by National Highway 37 and is about 11 kilometers east of Doboka in Norgao district. Situated just beneath the waterfall are the symbols of an ancient temple which may be traced back to the 10th century. Just beside this temple is found the ruins of another ancient temple which might belong to the 12th century. Legends say that sage Bohisto established an enchanting hermitage in this place. According to popular belief, the sage had later left this place and proceeded towards the Kamakya temple. Akakigonga a site of unparalleled natural beauty contains rock sculptures of images of gods and goddesses believed to be made by an anonymous king. The Allahabad inscription of the Gupta king Samudra Gupta makes a mention of Daboka along with Kamrup regions that were in the eastern borders of his kingdom. The ruins around Daboka, situated in the valley of Jomuna river, the chief tributary of the Brahmaputra, speak of the ancient history. In the main entrance of the temple, the Dwar Sakha is sculpted the Dwara Palikas. Above the Dwar Sakha is a narrow strip on which is sculpted the image of Lord Ganesh. These seem to be animated with ancient history of the region. In the altar of one of the temples discovered here, it may be assumed that the idols of some gods and goddesses were laid for worship. The temple of Hongkha Devi at Jogijan of Norgaon district is significant and remarkable for its high standard of ornamentative embellishment. The ruins of Songkha Devi temple testify that there were two temples here. At the doorway of the ruined temple is found floral embellishments sculpted with images of Dwarapalikas. 
Above the doorway is sculpted the goddess in an amorous pose, accompanied by two serpent maids who are leaning by the goddess. A fine instance of excellent sculpture and architecture, Hongkhadevi's temple may be dated back to the reign of the Pala dynasty, approximately during the period 10th to 12th century. In the entire Kopili Jamuna Valley, highest number of sculpture and architecture has been discovered in the Jogijan region. Most of these ruins are found in the ancient sacred region of Rajbari near the Jogi River. The originality of these sculptures found in Rajbari is proved by the high standards of design and abundance of sculpture and architecture found here. Judging from the design and structure, archaeologists assume that the temple might belong to the 11th or 12th century. These sculptures testify the glorious history of the contemporary rulers of the period who belonged to the Bhaumi or Barahi dynasty. According to Rajmohan Nath, an archaeologist, the present-day Jogijan was the ancient region of Dojaya Nagar mentioned in the Kalika Purana. The Archaeological Department of Assam has made arrangements for the preservation of the remains of the six temples found at Rajbari. The sculptures of the Kalpa Briksha, Rudraksha and the narrow structures above the Dwarasakha are beautiful and flawless. There is also kept an enchanting sketch of the temple spire in the region. Another archaeological site of Jogijan is Nornath, the temple of Lord Shiva. A total of eight temples of Lord Shiva were found in this region after archaeological excavations. The temples approximately date back to the 7th, 8th century. All the temples have a Shivalinga at the altar. The altar of these temples made of flat bricks is enclosed by a pavilion. Among the eight temples found in this region, two stand apart for their uniqueness. The altar of these temples have been decorated with terracotta sculptures on three sides. Temples with such terracotta sculptures are a rare sight in the whole of India. Terracotta sculptures in the flat bricks have lent a sense of speciality and beauty to these two temples. The altar of these temples is almost square in shape. Some of the Jonipits of the Shivalinga are circular while others are square in shape. An archaeological site worth mentioning is the Dioporbot in the Dhansiri Valley. This unique archaeological site with its rock sculpture is located almost 2 kilometers towards Gulaghat from Mumuligar Tiniali by National Highway 49. The hill is about 255 meters above the National Highway. Many rock sculptures are scattered around the hill and there is also the ruins of an ancient temple. The sculptures preserved here are said to date back to the 11th and 12th century. The statues that are found lying here are related to the stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata. A structurally wonderful and marvelous temple is discovered in this region. The front of the temple is circular with several embellishments. Many ornamental faces looking downward are sculpted on the upper part of the temple. The smooth visage of these sculptures and the varied expression and those done with a uniqueness which raises the temple to a special status. Beside the temple and on top of the temple are lying various embellished pieces and parts of the temple. A temple with such a circular structure appears rare even in the whole of India. Researchers have found similarities in sculpture 
between these and the ones found in Java in Southeast Asia. The Ahoms came to Assam in about 12th century AD. The mighty Ahoms ruled Assam for 600 years with courage and skill. The banks of the Dikho River were the chief locale where the Ahoms resided. During the 600 years of reign, the Ahoms had established their capital in different parts of the present Sipsagar district. Therefore, one may witness at Sipsagar many monuments that bear testimony to the glorious period of Ahom rule in Assam. It is believed that the religious-minded Ahoms had constructed more than 50 doles in Sipsagar district alone. They also dug several small and big ponds to a total of almost 300. The famous temple of the Ahoms, the Hibodol, is situated on the banks of the Sipsagar. The huge pond covering an area of almost 52 hectares in the midst of the Sipsagar town. The Hibolingo of the Hibodol is being worshipped by people since the ancient past. During Shivratri especially, followers from all over Assam and even outside Assam to offer the prayers. In height and size, this temple is the biggest of all temples in Assam. This huge temple is 40.45 meters in height and the golden pot placed at the crest of the temple is 2.29 meters long. The foundation of the temple is very well built. It is beautifully decorated with some floral patterns. The Devakotas in the outer walls of the temple are also embellished with many statues of gods and goddesses. This temple is unique from the point of view of its sculpture and architecture. The rows of the Devakotas on the outer walls of the main temple enhances the beauty of the temple and it also expresses the artistic temper and expertise of the local residents. The Sipsagar pond was dug in 1734 by the Ahom king Hibokhingal's wife, Queen Ombika. Hibodol, Vishnudol and Devidol were the three other temples constructed by her on the southern bank of the pond. The Devidol, built to the west of the Hibodol, differs from the latter in terms of architecture. The Devakotas in the outer walls of the Devidol has beautiful sculptures of gods and goddesses on it. There are a total of eight Angasikhars, two on each of the four sides of the main temple. The Bishnu Dol is to the east of the Hibodol. From the structural perspective, this temple is almost similar to the Devi Dol. The circular crest of the temple resembles a beehive in its pattern. The eight Angosikhars on the four sides of the crest enhances the beauty of the doll. This may be considered to be an excellent architectural creation of the Ahom regime. The smooth sculptures of gods and goddesses on the Devakotas are appealing to the eye. 
out of the 44 Devakothas, such culture can be in 42 of them. Alan Dehingya Buraguhai Burwa dug a pond during the reign of the Ahom king Godadhar Hingha. The pond is at present 13 kilometers from Sipsagar beside the national highway. A door was constructed on the southeast bank of the pond during 1683 and 1685 AD. The door is known as the Thaura Dole. This square-shaped dole is one of the most significant architectural structures of the Ahom period. Its design also varies from other doles of the period. The walls of the main temple and the Deva Kothas are embellished with various designs. Situated at Kalugao, 15 kilometers away from Sipsagar town, is a pawn that bears testimony to the significant royal historical legacy of the Ahoms. Horinath Bopatra Guhai built two doles on its banks during the reign of the Ahom king Rudra Hingha in about 1714-1744 AD. Religious rituals are performed in one of the two doles, that is the Bishnu dole, since the Ahom period till today. The chief entrance to the temple is in the front of the pavilion. Special mention may be made of the rituals and prayers offered during the festival of Shivratri in the temple. The devotees light the lamps at the altar of the temple. The vertical walls of the main temple or Biman has a total of 44 Devakothas. The sculptures of men and women carved in the Devakothas add to the charm of the temple. There are a total of eight Angosikhar, two each on all sides of the crest of the temple. On the crest may be seen ornamental patterns of horizontal waves. The other dole built by Horinath Bopatra Guhai on the bank of this pond is the Devi dole or the Jagadhatri dole. The dilapidated dole that has witnessed several natural calamities is now under the supervision of the Assam government for its preservation. This huge and enchanting dole has 44 devakothas on its outer walls.
Another significant architectural site of the Ahom reign found at Sipsagar town is the Horogori Doll. During the reign of the Ahom king Rajeshwar Kingho in 1751 to 1769 AD, this doll was built with the cooperation of Kirti Chandra Borborua. The architecture of the Horogori Doll differs from other dolls. The doll does not have a crest. The circular corners of the doll have royal designs carved in them. The two rows of devakotas in each wall is a treat to the eye. From its architectural perspective, this doll is different from all other dolls of the Ahom period. Namati is 35 kilometers south of Sipsagar district. Here is found the memorial pond of the Ahom period and on its banks are two dolls. Both these dolls were built by Namatyal Bhagoti Borwa during the reign of Gorinath Hingha in 1780-1794 AD. The Bishnu doll among the two has a biman to its east and a pavilion to its west. The crest of the doll has four ongodol beside it. The crest of the doll resembles a beehive in its design. Certain parts of the crest had floral patterns carved in it in the past. With the passage of time, however, these floral patterns were destroyed. The government of Assam has now made arrangements for the preservation of this site. Facing the north-south, beside the Bishnu Dol is situated the enchanting Devi Dol. Similar to other doles of the Ahom period, this dole too has a double-roofed pavilion in front of it. The crest of the doll has a total of eight Angasikharas. The walls of the main temple have a row of Devakothas. The ridged pattern of the crest enhances the beauty of the structure. In ancient Nongpu, which is today's Sipsagar town, a doll was constructed during the reign of Horgodil, Lokmi Hingho in the period 1769 to 1780 AD. Gorinath Hingho ceremonially dedicated this doll in 1780 when he occupied the throne. The walls of the doll have two rows of devakothas amounting to a total of 90. The rich pattern carved in this almost 20 meter high doll bestows it a royal grandeur. In architecture such as these lies a glory and heritage. Till date, the government of Assam has made arrangements for the preservation of 96 such archaeological resources. Preservation of these unique archaeological resources that belong to the glorious period of the Ahoms, which are also our national heritage, will also ensure the preservation of the Assamese identity in the days to come. The Ahom capital Rongpu was the city of merriment, the city of joy. The Horgudu constructed a two-storied wooden house at Rongpu during 1696 to 1714 AD to enjoy games and watch the performances during various colorful festivals of his time. Horgudu Pramutto Hingho constructed a concrete Ronghor in place of the wooden one in 1745 AD. The Rongo is said to be the first pavilion or amphitheatre of Asia. In these archaeological resources of Assam, the lifeline of the Assamese people are engraved, the history, cultural tradition and scientific temper of its people.